Hello everyone. Uh, so, welcome back to eShikshana. Uh, we had uh, finished uh, module 4 till waste to wealth concept in solid waste, solid waste management. So, that is the second part of module 4. So, we will continue with uh, further slides, uh, further information about uh, organic waste, inorganic waste, medical waste, etc. Now, we look into the current status of waste management in India. We had concluded the last session with uh, waste to wealth management and uh, how waste to wealth can happen and had quoted few of the examples in the last session. So, in this session now currently we will see how what is the current status of waste management in India. In India what is happening about waste management. So, the municipal solid waste management handling rules 2000 indicated that all the urban local bodies ULBs are responsible for the collection, transportation, disposal and segregation of solid waste in India. In 2000, it was told to all the ULBs that the urban local bodies are responsible for doing the collection, transportation, disposal and segregation of solid waste in India. So, India approximately it generates 62 million tons of waste each year. Just imagine 62 million tons of waste each year. About 43 million tons, only 70 percent are collected of about which about 12 millions are treated. The collected uh, waste is uh, about 70 percent that is 43 millions is collected. But amongst that only 12 millions, only 12 millions is treated and 31 million goes for the landfills. So, the proportion of the treated ones and the landfills is huge. Landfill is happening in a wide range. So, with changing consumption patterns and rapid economic growth, since India is a developing country, the consumption rates will be higher and there is a economic growth also. So, it is estimated that urban municipal solid waste generation will increase to 165 million tons. Just imagine 2000 in the 2000 year, uh, 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 in the earlier years it was like 62 million tons of waste per year, but by 2030 it is said that 165 million, around 5 times more than what has been there. So, most of India's dump sites have extended their capacity and height limit of 20 meters, 20 meters is approximately of 5 floors, 5 even if you keep the average floor height as 3 meters, 5 floors building, 5 floors height. So, the dump sites, landfills have become so huge. It is, an est it is estimated that these sites enclose more than 10,000 hectares of urban land. Just imagine urban land is so valuable, so precious and 10,000 hectares of this is gone for landfill and just for a dump site. So, that is the existing scenario of uh, Indian context. So, where do the solid waste generate from? So, basically it can be solid wastes can be broadly divided into domestic, domestic is nothing but residential, industrial, commercial from industries, from commercials like malls, business centers, agricultural. Broadly it can be classified into these, right. So, medical it also can be generated from medic, medical centers, food stores, for distribution points, slaughter areas, warehouses, agency premises, markets, domestic areas, appropriate solid waste management strategies may vary from institutional, communal and domestic sources depending on the type and volumes of waste generated in the vicinity. Few classification of waste are solid waste. Solid waste is MSW is municipal solid waste 
what we are studying is solid waste management what you are looking now is solid waste management solid waste there are again categories in that also we will be also looking at municipal solid waste which comes under the wall is uh, the zones which comes under the municipal the waste generated in that particular zones right so solid waste is in general is a vegetable waste kitchen waste household waste etc right so that's a domestic uh, waste which has been produce, produced then the e waste discarded electrical devices electronic devices such as computers tv music system mobile phones etc liquid waste water used for different industries tanneries distilleries thermal power plants there is plastic waste plastic waste could be like plastic bags which we use in the in our daily life plastic bottles which we use for drinks juices for other purposes buckets etc all the plastics which is used in our daily lives metal waste unused metal sheet metal scraps etc and uh, nuclear waste unused materials from nuclear power plants further all these types of waste can be grouped into wet waste and dry waste all of these type type these typologies plastic waste metal waste nuclear waste e waste solid waste all of these can again be subcategorized into biodegradable and non biodegradable degradable biodegradable could be wet waste which can be uh, utilized again as a manure or a compost and the dry waste which could be recycled also non biodegradable so we'll see what is municipal solid waste msw municipal solid waste commonly known as trash so waste we commonly call it as trash so municipal solid waste commonly known as trash or garbage in the us in us they call it as trash or garbage in britain it is referred to rubbish uh it is also a waste type consisting of everyday items that are discarded by the public so garbage can also refer specifically to food waste as in a garbage disposal the two are sometimes collected separately although the waste may originate from a number of sources that has nothing to do with the municipality the traditional role of municipalities in collecting and managing these kinds of waste have produced the particular etymology municipal so it is just that the traditional role what municipalities were doing till now right it could not be the complete ownership taken by municipality or it could not be accountable for municipality but since ages it's been the duty or traditional role for municipalities to manage and collect and manage these kinds of waste so uh, it became municipal solid waste that's it but it could be of private firms also private organizations also private institutions also commercial spaces also so um, but it is usually referred to municipal solid waste waste can be classified in several ways as mentioned earlier biodegradable waste which is food and kitchen waste because they are the wet waste it can be biodegradable green waste paper most can be recycled although some difficult to compost plant material may be excluded they all of these food and kitchen waste green waste paper they they can be made into compost recyclable materials there are lot of recyclable materials we can also consider that to be as a dry waste paper cardboard paper can be recycled waste papers etc even in our daily life people come and collect uh, newspapers books etc so uh, that is recyclable cardboards glass bottles jars which is used in our daily lives in kitchens and for other things tin cans 
where we consume juices water etc aluminum cans aluminum foil metals certain plastics certain types of plastics especially the hard grade plastics are used can be recycled commonly textiles clothing tires batteries etc etc so these can be separated easily at the source itself so it reduces the load on the municipality to manage the waste each and every house imagine if they are separating parcel back packages etc which is coming under the papers plastic metal clothing most of the waste is managed at the source itself and also wet waste if you are separating dry waste and wet waste at the residential level itself there is less load and we can also contribute to the management of solid waste locally and globally other type of waste are inert waste inert waste is nothing but construction and demolition waste lot of houses lot of buildings are getting constructed lot of existing structures are getting demolished or revamped or uh, alterations are done to those but the management of this waste which has been demolished or the remains of constructions or unused materials of construction is not handled is still not handled properly so which can be referred to as debris construction and demolition waste can be referred to as debris dirt and rocks and etc etc they are called as inert waste also and we have electrical and electronic waste which comes under electrical appliances light bulbs washing machines tvs computer screens mobile phones alarms watches etc etc all of these electrically which we use they are can be categorized into electrical or electronic waste composite waste waste clothing tetra pack food drink cartons food and drink cartons waste plastic such as toys plastic garden furniture etc they are all composite waste hazardous waste this is something which has to be which is which we are supposed to be in care hazardous waste is nothing but it includes most of the paints it could be furniture paints gate paints or uh, it it could be uh, wall paints so which which are sometimes hazardous chemicals which which is used in factories and other sectors tires batteries light bulbs electrical appliances fluorescent lamps aerosol spray cans fertilizers etc these are very hazardous so it has to be separated clearly toxic waste including pesticides herbicides and fungicides biomedical waste expired pharma pharmaceutical drugs etc sometimes we don't see the we actually uh, check out what is the expiry date of the medical drugs pharmaceutical drugs which we obtain so they are also waste so that also has to be separated so for example typical municipal solid waste in china is composed of 55.9% of food residue 8.5% of paper 11.2% of plastics 3.2% of textiles 2.9% of wood waste 0.8% of rubber waste and 18.4% of non combustibles so basically food residues are high in china so like this the separation and categorization helps us in understanding the condition of solid waste generation in that particular area or zones now we can see garden waste garden waste is the accumulated plant matter and from which gardening activities 
which involve cutting or removing vegetation therefore cutting the lawn weed removal hedge trimming or pruning consisting of lawn clippings leaf matter wood and soil so this garden waste is nothing but all the waste leaves which could be fallen from the trees it could be removed from the trees weed removal which we to maintain the garden we remove the weeds extra growth grown plants etc and we cut off few uh, green uh, few trees and uh, shrubs to maintain the growth head trimming which is called as head trimming also pruning consisting of lawn clippings lawn lawn growth also is maintained by chopping off the growth so leaf matter which is fallen or which is made to be fall wood and soil etc etc these things come under garden waste it's basically the plant matter which is coming in gardening activities then we have organic waste organic waste is any material that is biodegradable and comes from either a plant or an animal biodegradable waste is organic material that can be broken into carbon dioxide methane and or simpler organic molecules examples of organic waste include green waste food waste food soiled paper non hazardous wood waste green waste and landscape and pruning waste basically organic waste is nothing but it's the biodegradable and comes either from plant or animal it could be it is biodegradable but it can be either from plant or animal garden waste is mostly what we consider is from plants and trees but organic waste it could be both from plants and animals right so biodegradable degradable waste is organic material that can be broken into carbon dioxide methane or simple organic molecules so while uh, using this again or making it to compost or uh, making it uh, use as a manures these can produce lot of gases like carbon dioxide methane or simple organic molecules etc which can be used in other form organic waste can be basically classified into these four types food waste food waste could be complete food waste could be organic food soiled paper could be organic in food soiled paper ex which exclude styrofoam styrofoam is one form of uh, uh, chemical structure which is used to make paper so that excluding that kind of paper all the other food soiled paper can be used called as organic waste that means it is biodegradable so food waste could be sandwiches cheese vegetables fruits cut fruits fast food chicken bread rice etc 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 which is the residues of food waste food soiled paper excludes styrofoam includes coffee filters tea bags tea bags ready made tea bags that comes under now food soiled paper pizza boxes the delivery boxes that comes under food soiled paper paper cups and napkins paper towels tissues wrappers egg cartons the cartons where egg is placed those are also called as food soiled paper paper plates so basically all the uh, paper which is used for wrapping or consuming food so that is food soiled paper which is also biodegradable and that comes under organic waste then the green waste is biodegradable that also comes under organic waste this green waste can also come under garden waste also so in green waste cut flowers grass leaves branches weeds etc in non hazardous wood waste it could be of a tree it could be of a lumber it could be of pallets it could be of cardboard plywood what 
plywoods are made by trees so the waste which is developed due to the plywood that is or unusable unused plywood or waste plywood which cannot be further processed or used again they also can come under organic waste so when organic waste these kind of wastes are filled in la dumped in landfills it undergoes anaerobic decomposition due to the lack of oxygen and produces methane when released into the atmosphere methane is 20 times more potent a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide methane is 20 times harmful than carbon dioxide harmful in the sense it can create contribute to greenhouse gas 20 times more it can contribute to greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide CO2 is the common thing which everybody knows that it is contributing to the greenhouse gas but methane which is obtained due to the landfills can also be 20 times more stronger to create greenhouse gases right so due to the lack of oxygen these organic waste sometimes here also you have dry semi dry waste food waste is wet waste dry waste kind of dry and wet waste so these kind of waste if it is landfilled put in a landfill they produce 20 times more harmful than carbon dioxide which is a methane so organic recycling reduces greenhouse emission when conserving our natural resources so if we think about recycling these it is very useful to reduce the greenhouse gas emission recycling means these could be used as menus and uh, these could be con converted into uh, uh, compost these could be used uh, um, these could be again recycled so like this if the separation and reuse happens methane can be reduced greenhouse effect can be reduce the methane gas generated from food waste is 20 to 25% times stronger than co2 carbon dioxide soil with compost is more nutritious and holds water better and has more microbes which makes healthier soil and protects plants from diseases so if we can if we are able to convert this organic waste into compost we have a better soil soil degradation is reduced and greenhouse gas emission is reduced so it helps in all of this recyclable organic waste accounts for about 40% of all the materials which california sent to landfills each year out of the 40% of organic material that sits in landfills 30% could be used for compost or mulch every ton of paper that is recycled saves about 17 trees this is the very 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 common saying that every ton of paper one ton of paper can with which is recycled can save about 17 trees now let's look what is inorganic waste inorganic waste is as we saw in earlier definitions it is non biodegradable so it is a type of waste that does not contain organic compounds so this waste is generally very difficult to decompose by microorganisms they could be glass aluminum cans dust metal etc or some of the inorganic waste inorganic waste remains free from decay they don't decay but with more than 500 years needed being common for effective decomposition if it is left on the landfill it may take more than 500 years each material has different value for decomposing on its own in a natural way 
So it could be more than which might cross more than 500 years. Therefore, disposal can be challenging. So better way to uh, cut off the inorganic waste is reducing the consumption. In the first place itself, consuming those kind of bottles, uh, bottles used for something, glass used for something, metals used for something could be reduced at the first place itself. So reducing consumption of these, reusing or recycling these products, waste products will help in cutting off or coping the uh, organic waste. Disposing, how can we dispose inorganic waste? Most people feel that disposing inorganic form of waste items like glass or plastic turns out to be a daunting task. However, it is equally important to understand this type of waste is non-biodegradable. Right? So, therefore, they turns out to be unfriendly and harmful to the environment for long period. So, one of the best ways of disposing inorganic or chemical waste is by recycling the same if it is created. The other way is cutting off the usage of that at the first place itself, reducing the consumption. With the help of the latest technological advancements, now it is possible to recycle almost all types of inorganic wastes. As we know, glass can be used again to prepare a glass. So, this is only thing is separation and uh, making it reach to the venue where recycling can happen that is the main issue. So, that is where we have to look into how it can be done in each and every setup voluntarily. Then we have another type of solid waste that is medical waste. Medical waste is any kind of waste that contains infectious material. It should have which, which one you call medical waste which has infectious materials or material that is potentially infectious which should have infectious material in itself or it should be infectious to others. So, that is considered to be the medical waste. So, this definition includes waste generated by healthcare facilities like physicians offices, physicians or nothing but general doctors, hospitals, dental practices, laboratories, medical research facilities and veterinary clinics. All health related services produce medical waste. So, they include anything that is soaked in blood that could be gloves, gauze, gowns, etc. Gloves, gauze, gowns, etc. they use in laboratories, medical laboratories, they use in all the health setups, hospitals, clinics, uh, even for operations, etc. So, those things has to, those are com, those considered to be infectious. So, that comes under medical waste. Human or animal tissue created during procedures. These tissues which are created that is infectious, cultures of infectious diseases, agents, any waste produced in patient's room with communicable diseases, communicable diseases which is nothing but which we have recently gone through COVID-19. So, these the waste which has been produced during those times in the patient's room or the space uh, or the doctors which who treat them. So, uh, as we saw those communicable diseases say what waste we could get gowns, gloves, gowns, masks, uh, injection syringes, blood samples, etc. All of these are infectious. So, that come under again medical waste. Discarded vaccines. We vaccines were created to face the this one, but discarded vaccines are harmful. 
So medical waste, like this, there are n number of waste which is being generated in hospitals and other services, other health related services. Medical waste can contain bodily fluids like blood or other contaminants. The 1988 Medical Waste Tracking Act defined it as waste generated during medical research, testing, diagnosis, immunization or treatment of either human beings or animals. Some examples are cultural culture dishes, glassware, bandages, gloves, discarded sharp needles or scalpels, swabs, tissues, etc. They used to do during COVID-19 also, we all uh, have gone through uh, swab testing, etc. Those swab testing, what they use, they use this cotton and uh, whip. So that is discarded. So that is difficult to manage. So that has to be those these medical waste has to be handled very carefully. Medical waste is a subset of wastes generated at healthcare facilities such as hospitals, physicians, dental practices, etc. as well as medical research facilities and laboratories. Generally, medical waste is healthcare waste that may be contaminated by blood, body fluids and potentially infectious materials and is often referred to as regulated medical waste. It is also can be termed as regulated medical waste. So these are few different names which can be given for medical waste. It can be called as medical waste, it can be called as biomedical waste, clinical waste, Clinical waste and other things, these just can doesn't mean that which has been produced from the same place. Like for only from the clinics, what waste is produced? It is not clinical waste. From it could be from the larger setup, smaller setup, laboratories, etc. But it, all the medical waste can be called under these names. It can be called as health healthcare waste, infectious medical waste, regulated medical waste, biohazardous waste clinical waste, biomedical waste, medical waste. So the terms are used interchangeably, but there is a distinguish between distinction between general healthcare waste and hazard med, hazardous medical waste. <coughs> general healthcare waste and hazardous medical waste. These can be distinguished uh, clearly. The distinction among these is very clear. So all of these can be called to the same thing. But again in that can be separated as general healthcare waste and hazardous medical waste. The, the WHO, World Health Organization, categorizes shops. They categorize shops. Shops could be syringes. Uh, nice, which is very sharp, etc. Human tissue, fluids, contaminated supplies as biohazardous. They are considered as biohazardous. Non contaminated equipment and animal tissue as general medical waste. General medical waste is general healthcare or medical waste is animal tissue and non contaminated equipment. In fact, office paper, office paper in the sense, the office which is set up in hospitals, clinics, uh, laboratories, clinics, small, all types of clinics like dental, operation theatres, etc. nearby. So, office sets, office setup which is there in this particular uh, facilities, the paper which is produced from there. Sweeping waste, sweeping waste from these setups, kitchen waste from healthcare facilities, office sweeping waste, kitchen waste from healthcare facilities is still technically medical waste, though it's non, not regulated and not hazardous. It is not hazardous, but they are also considered to be medical waste. Technically, they are also medical waste. So, shops means nothing but they include pierce 
that anything which can pierce the skin of a human body so which includes needles scalpels lancets broken glass razors ampules staples wires and trockers all of these which can pierce easily into the skin easily or not easily whatever it is but it can pierce into the skin of a human body that is sharps infectious waste is nothing but anything infectious and potentially infectious goes in this category including swabs swab test which we, which they do usually for finding out some cultures and uh, tissues excreta human excreta that is human waste equipment and lab cultures so these are highly infectious <coughs> radioactive Ag again we can have sub category for all of this so radioactive this kind of waste generally means unused radiotherapy liquid or lab research liquid it can also consist of any glassware or other supplies contaminated with this liquid then pathological waste <coughs> pathological waste is human fluids tissue blood all related to the pathology body parts bodily fluids contaminated animal carcasses all these come under pathological waste human fluids human fluids could be any kind and uh, tissue urine human fluids could be urine also cough urine um, mucus etc blood body parts body parts of the human body it could be eyes nose legs etc kidney bodily fluids and contaminated animal carcasses are pathological pharmaceuticals is nothing but as the name itself says which is generated from the pharmacies they include unused there are lot of medicines which could be unused them and uh, expired uh, medicines and or contaminated vaccines and drugs they come under pharmaceutical <coughs> groups it also encompasses antibiotics injectables and pills <coughs> then we have chemical chemical is mostly related to the laboratory purposes so these are disinfectants solvents used for laboratory purposes batteries and heavy metals for, from medical equipments such as mercury from broken thermometers etc <coughs> then we have then we have genotoxic waste this is highly highly hazardous form of medical waste genotoxic is highly hazardous so what does it include carcinogenic even in medicines these uh, things are used so carcinogenic waste teratogenic and mutagenic these are it can include cytotoxic drugs all these can also called, called as cytotoxic can be used in drugs which can be called as cytotoxic drugs intended for use of cancer treatment so they are highly hazardous so that could be separated so it uh, categorized general non related regulated medical waste which also can be considered as non hazardous waste non regulated general medical waste can also be considered as non hazardous waste so this type doesn't pose any particular chemical biological physical or radioactive danger so we could see that all broken syringes uh, injection uh, bottles which is there they also can come under medical waste so now what what happens with this medical waste that is definitely treated separately so uh, it can be treated on site or off site on site medical waste treatment the on site treatment of medical waste is generally limited to large well monitored hospitals and facilities on site treatments of medical waste like 
well moneyed hospitals is nothing but huge large who have sufficient uh, who are well equipped with sufficient infrastructure and spaces and uh, economy to maintain the on site treatment is uh, what we categorize as well moneyed hospital so they can have on site treatment in the location of a hospital itself they can have the treatment center also for these waste products so on site treatment is extremely cost prohibitive that's because the required equipment is expensive to buy expensive to maintain and expensive to manage and run the regulatory maze around such equipment and its use presents yet another barrier to enter there are lot of regulations to manage and run the on site medical treatment so that uh, for the approvals and all the regulatory systems there is, it is uh, all the regulatory systems and approvals also is like a barrier for having this on site off site medical waste treatment is very very common it is far far more far better far more cost effective it can be not called as better but then it is far more cost effective option for most small sized and mid sized medical practices and facilities if there is some small clinic or uh, very mid sized uh, hospitals or uh, two to three uh, uh, super speciality hospitals so very mid sized practices and small sized practices can afford to very easily afford to give the medical waste off site off site medical waste treatment is nothing but the waste which is produced by these facilities they are given outside for the treatment that means they are whether recycled or done anything else is done to that is managed outside the vicinity so that works out cost effective for small practices and medium practices third party vendors whose main business is healthcare waste collection and disposal have the equipment and training needed to handle the process so there are lot of third party vendors who collect these wastes generated from these hospitals and they can dispose they know how it has to be disposed how it has to be managed so they can handle the process easily they are also well trained for this purpose no matter where medical waste is processed it's ultimately treated how it is treated it is treated by these processes incineration autoclaving microwave biological or chemical treatment so these five methods could be adapted to treat different different categories of medical waste whether it is done on site or off site these five methods or few of these methods could be adapted to manage few of the medical wastes so we'll just see what is the uh, just uh, we'll just give an introduction about these things so first and foremost incident incineration which is very common kind of treatment for medical waste Incira incineration once by far the most popular method it's very very popular method which has decreased in usage since 1990s and as regulation has forced other methods to come online so incineration before 1997 over 90% of all infectious medical waste were disposed of by incineration changes to epa regulations has led providers to seek other disposal means this is still the only method used on pathological waste pathological waste is nothing but which is related to human body such as body parts blood etc recognizable tissues for these there is no other way than incineration incineration is nothing but burning so autoclaving autoclaving is one more method here steam sterilization 
renders biohazard waste non-infectious. After it's been sterilized, the waste can be disposed of normally in solid waste landfills. So autoclaving what they do is they put all of this, most of the waste for steam sterilization. Steam sterilization taken, takes place in autoclaving method and what does it do? It makes biohazardous waste to non-infectious. It converts biohazardous waste into non-infectious. So after it's been sterilized, after it has gone in the steam sterilization process, the waste can be directly disposed into the solid waste landfills or it can be incinerated under less stringent regulations. So the next one is biological uh, method. Biological method is an experimental method of treating biomedical waste which uses enzymes to neutralize hazardous infectious organisms. It is still under development and rarely used in practice. So they are still trying options of it but then it is not in use as much as other methods like autoclaving and incineration. Microwaving, this is another way to render hazardous healthcare waste uh, non-hazardous is to microwave it with high powered equipment as with autoclaving this method opens up the waste to normal landfill disposal or incineration afterwards. So it, this is also very similar to autoclaving. Autoclaving what happens? Steam sterilization is done in autoclaving method and uh, it makes it non-biohazardous non-hazardous. So the similar concept is used for microwaving also. Microwaving is to reduce the hazardness of the waste and uh, high powered, it's a high powered equipment. So after this it can be used again for landfill and sent to landfill and other methods. So chemical, this is again one more method which is which can be used for waste treatment, waste treatment. Some kinds of chemical waste uh, may be neutralized by applying reactive chemicals that render it inert. Inert means it's of no use. Yeah, so chemical waste may be neutralized by applying reactive chemicals are used to make it of no use and later this is generally reserved for waste that's chemical in nature. This is mostly for chemical, uh, chemical waste which is produced in the medical setup. So this completes your uh, medical waste treatment methods. We will look into the other types of uh, um, waste in the next session. Thank you.